how the tyranny of experts turned a pandemic into a catastrophe. Okay, so I was telling you that when I see the, the word experts in a New York Times piece, I assume they're fools. A fool is a person who knows a lot, or may know a lot, if there are fools who know nothing, uh, but they, they reach foolish conclusions. And that's all that matters. How much you know is irrelevant if your conclusion is, is uh, destructive. So you were saying. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's uh, Sean, really can I have my I... guest back? Oh, okay. He's not, I'm not hearing him. Hello, Dennis? Okay, now I'm hearing you. All right. Dennis, <laughs> this is really the story of the, uh, of the pandemic panic, is the role of very few characters, the director of the World Health Organization, and of course now famous Dr. Anthony Fauci, who just happened to be in the right place at the right time. They had expertise, just as Neil Ferguson of the Imperial College London had some expertise in modeling, but it was his model that told us that we were dealing with about a 3.5% infection fatality rate. World Health Organization jumped on that. Anthony Fauci jumped on that. And then he happened to have the ear of the president of the United States. The president, of course, has inherited him from the uh, sort of career <laughs> deep state that you have when you come into Washington, D.C. He's the only one, you know, basically his only advisor. And he's the one that told President Trump we're going to have two and a half million deaths unless we lock down the country. That's the tyranny of experts in which two or three people with very narrow expertise were giving advice about what the president should do for a country of 330 million people. That's something that we don't want to have happen again. Oh, it's going to happen again. There was an article, I forgot where, but uh, in, in, in a mainstream so source that the this lockdown is a dress rehearsal for the Green New Deal. I, I find that at least plausible. At the very least, it wasn't in plan, but at the very least, people... Uh, who have designs for control of the global economy, certainly now know what it takes to get Americans to comply. Beforehand, you might have thought, well, if we had been told we had to stay inside for our own good, we would have all rebelled. But instead, we were told we need to stay inside and lock down and stay out of uh, worship services for the good of our fellow human beings, the good of our fellow Americans who are more vulnerable than us. And so we were sort of hoisted on our own moral guitars, our own concern for other people uh, during the lockdowns, unfortunately, it was used against us. Well, that will be done with global warming. As I said from the beginning, this involves hundreds of thousands of lives, which is a tragedy, uh, or in the world, a million lives, whatever the, the total right. is. Right. But we are told that global warming is an existential threat to life. If we lock down for a million lives, why wouldn't we lock down for six billion lives? That's the exact argument I think that we can at least anticipate. It's one of the reasons I think we need to learn what's happening in this case, because in both uh, climate change and the pandemic, we were taking advice based on predictive computer models that we had no reason to believe in the beginning. It's one thing if a meteor hits planet and we have to have some kind of emergency measures. At least we know we're, we're addressing something that real and present danger. In the case of the pandemic, we reacted based upon pro projections uh, that were based entirely upon computer models. And so even President Trump, unfortunately, is still saying, well, we, 200,000 may have been lost, but we saved 2 million lives. We probably didn't save 2 million lives. That was based entirely on those we now know bogus computer That's models, exactly and we're going to correct. be playing the same game with climate change. That is exactly right. The book is The Price of Panic, How the Tyranny of Experts Turned a Pandemic into a Catastrophe. And there are three authors, Douglas Axe, William Briggs, Jay Richards, and my guest is Jay Richards. One final question. Where do you live? I live in Washington, D.C. I was locked down here in the D.C. area during... The entire uh, pandemic, my co-author Doug Axe is in California, and my third co-author, who's from Manhattan, was stranded in uh, Taiwan for the entire duration. So we all stayed locked down, and we used the lockdown to write a book about the lockdown. What is it now in Washington? Can you go into a restaurant? You can go into a restaurant wearing masks. The general rule is you can wear masks, except when, and you don't have to wear it when you're eating, though we've recently been told that you need to wear masks 
between bites, so I don't well, know. Well, exactly I know how that's Gavin Newsom said that. Did anybody else say that? <laughs> That's that's generally the word actually here at the moment, though I can tell you that it's enforced um, sporadically depending upon which part of the city you're wait, in. Wait, wait. You mean it is enforced at all? So you're, the, not the currently, really, you're not currently chewing? Where is your mask? <laughs> it happens. It absolutely happens. Um, but at the moment, it depends. You know, if you're in D.C. versus you're in the suburbs, it varies some. Uh, and my impression is that, honestly, it, it, Dennis, it depends if you're in, a, a, frankly, a really white upper middle class area. It's enforced with great zeal. If you're in a kind of normal, more middle class part of the city or uh, part of the area, it's actually much more rational. That's the dynamic I'm certainly noticing here in the D.C. area. Well, listen, Jay, congratulations on your book. Thanks so much, Dennis. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. The Price of Panic. Well, how the tyranny of experts turned a pandemic into a catastrophe up at DennisPrager.com.